Okay, so this is a close-up of a pixel. This is a WS2811 pixel. That, now, there is a front and a back. So wires come in, and then wires go out. One set of wires goes to the controller, the other goes to the end, and it only works one way. If you look through the epoxy, and here you can see 12 volt data ground. Well, this side, the wires coming out of this side, are the side that go to the controller. Okay, so when you wire it up to controller on these, we want to make sure this goes toward 12 volt, and then you want to make sure this lines up to data, and that this lines up to ground. And if you have a set of lights, and it's really hard to tell, well, what you can do, and Alan helped me do this last year, is you just cut one pixel off your string, and you give it a go. And worst case scenario, you hurt one, one bolt, not an entire string. So that's a close-up of a pixel. Now, one of the first things I like to do with a new string of lights is to just do a quick continuity check. These are JST, these are three-pin JST connectors that um, Seasonal Entertainment puts on their on their string. You could easily do this with just the bare wires. And then I'm using my multimeter, so I'm going to turn this on. And this is just a cheap one I got at Lowe's or Home Depot, and I'm moving it to this setting right here. See if, and what I'm doing here is I want to do a continuity check to make sure that a signal goes through. And I know it's working if I get a little tone. And it doesn't matter which side is which in this use of a multimeter. So I put it one end here, the other end here. And what that's telling me is it gets a signal all the way through. Now I do the one on the other side. Signal goes all the way through. Now one's 12 volt, the other one's ground. Now if I do the middle, Nothing. Why? Well, that's the data line, and that goes chip to chip, and it gets repeated. So you won't get a continuity signal through that. So by doing that, I've assured myself that those two wires are good. Now, the other place I like to do a continuity check is on the pigtails. So what I do is I just take a male and female, put them together, and it's easier to test them this way. Anyway. The blue and the blue, the red and the red. And it's important to do this with the pigtails, because sometimes the pigtails are wired up funny. Um, or they just flat out don't work. It's black. It's been known to happen. The last thing you want to be doing is ripping through the lights and not understanding why and have it turn out to be sim something simple like this. Alright, so now I know both of these pigtails are good. So now I actually want to test to see if the lights work. Now, I mentioned last year how I cut off one bolt to test it. Well. It, this is that one bolt. I've done is on this side, I have one of the green connectors lopped off the, the male three, uh, three pin JST connector, and I, you know, stripped the wires and put them into this green connector. And it's hard to see, but this first one's is uh, V plus, which is my 12 volts, and then data, and then I skip one, and then it's ground. What's nice about using this for testing is not that I'm testing this bulb here, but I still have this female 3-pin JST connector that I can use to hook up to the male end on the string of lights. Now, I'm going to lob this male end off, right, to put a pigtail on it, but for the point of testing, I can use this, and I have like 17 of these strings this year, and I can go through them pretty quickly with this uh, little guy. So I'll just plug this into the board. The male connector. It's a string of 50 and I plug it into that guy. And now I'm ready to test. So let me uh, go program the board. Okay, so this is the configuration screen for my SAN devices Pixel Controller E682. And I have a configure for IP address of 192.168.1.208. It is in unicast receive mode. And right now I have test pattern zero, which means it, it's not doing any test pattern. It's just going to go do its normal thing. So I have, I'm plugging the lights into port 41. So I come down here and this is my outputs 41, 42, 43, and 44. And I only have one in use. So that means I'm using 41. 
The output type is configured for my WS 2811s. I have a 128 5 pixels configured, but I'm actually only using 51. That doesn't hurt anything. And then the important part is I'm starting my universe at 13, channel 1, through whatever. So when I go and set up my test sequence, I need to make sure that I'm running it through universe 13. <clears throat> now just for grins, I'm going to do the test pattern to 15 update my system information and I look at the lights and they're changing red green blue red green blue red green blue and that's great but if there was a bad bulb in there it would be hard for me to tell so really what I want to do is create a test sequence to do it so I'm going to set this back to zero update system information and now I'm going to go do my test sequence and I'm going to kick off the sequence editor from the Laterama control panel or the little task tray item which is important starting in 4.0 and I'm going to create a new animation sequence to test my pixel string. So new animation sequence doesn't matter in fact this works better if it's one channel and I only need this to be 15 seconds long BAM okay so here it is let me shrink it down so I can see it all and I'm going to save this as test string test string yes replace it okay and then I'm going to go and export my channel configuration which is practically nothing here and I'm gonna call it erase me okay next I go and I pull up uh, Bob's Vegematic which I conveniently keep in my download folder and so I'm going to create a test string doesn't matter what you call it the starting universe is going to be universe 13 starting at channel 1 this is continuous DMX is the network type the number of strings is 1 and the length is well it's 51 but I'll call it 51 now it's 50 lights I'm testing but I also have that extra little light that I got on my little nubby that um, I used to connect it to the board so now I go to export I say my starting config is going to be erase me and then the erase me to I'm going to use as where it's going to write it all to and it should have done that so now I go and edit import channel configuration erase me to there it is and I click on this and it should be universe 13 1 through 3 for the first channel and that's absolutely right so now I'm going to do my test sequence so I come over here to the color fade tool and I am going to pick all white white's a very important color because it turns everything on so I'm going to have the white go for a while and now I'm going to do red switch the red over to green and copy and then I'm going to have green for a while and then I'm going to switch it over to blue and then I'll have it blue for a while and then I will go back to white. Nope, the other way. Control Z. Start at the wrong place. Start at the wrong place again. There. And we'll make white go a little longer because I missed it here. Okay. So that, is, and I save it, and that is my... Uh, sequence that I'm going to use to test my pixels. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for that these are all white and they should all do the same thing at the same time. If anybody's not playing along there's something wrong. And then it's going to switch to red and then it's going to transition to green and it's going to transition to blue and back to white again. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for everything to go the same. Alright, that's my test sequence. Okay, so the other thing I want to check here quick is I want to show you how this is uh, configured. So we need to be able to make Lightrama talk to the SAN device controller. So you go to Edit, Preferences, 
Go to DMX Preferences and you make sure Allow DMX Editing is checked. Then I go down to Network Preferences, opens up a new dialog. I am on the DMX tab and I go down here to Universe 13, which is the one that we have the uh, controller configured for, and it is pointed at 192.168.1.208, which matches the um, the IP address of the SAN devices E682. And you can see here I have it all set up. Now, if this was using an adapter like an NTEC, I would use that, but I'm using E131, which is DMX over Ethernet. So that is my network configuration. So with that, I should be all good to go. So now we start up the test sequence. Play. Go over here. And they're all white. Now we're kind of just looking to make sure they're all doing the same thing. And if you look, see somebody who's off, that's a problem. Now we do white because that's all on. And then red to green. Very nice. So that's a working set of lights. And of course my extra one here is going as well. <laughs> 